Imagine a world with a literacy rate of only 3%. What if, out of every 100 people, only three could read and write? Right now, in America, there are over 320 million people, yet fewer than 9 million of us, less than 3%, can read and write code, the language of technology. So what is code? Coding or programming is just telling a computer what to do. Code is the same thing as software, or if you're in the younger generation, code is what apps are made of. Code runs your computer, and these days computers are everywhere, in all the coolest gadgets, from 3D printers to drones, self-driving cars to smartphones, Fitbits to Roombas, and more. Code is a part of every one of these technologies, and it's a part of every technology you'll use at work and at home for the rest of your life. Every job you want, every job you want your kids to have is touched in some way by computer software. Imagine the power you can have if you learn how to read and write the language of code. Experts say that as many as 70 million jobs could disappear over the next 10 years due to automation. But on the other hand, there are over 6 million job openings in the U.S. right now. And over 1 million of those are good paying technology jobs with no qualified applicants, no literate applicants. The Bureau of Labor Statistics says that seven of the top 10 fastest growing and highest paying jobs for the next 10 years are in technology, computing. And there are over 300,000 unfilled positions right now in this country in cybersecurity. And those jobs can average as much as $90,000 a year in salary. Plus, you don't have to go very far to find these jobs. There are literally thousands of openings available every day right here in the Atlanta area. So what makes coders so valuable? Well, it's because we're problem solvers who can use technology. You tell me, are there some problems in the world? Yeah, a few, right? The world needs problem solvers. Your goal in life? should be to solve more problems than you create. And the world highly rewards problem solvers. You might have seen a graphic like this one before from code.org. A college graduate can earn a half million dollars more in their lifetime than someone with just a high school diploma. A computer science degree can earn you a million dollars more over your working lifetime than a high school degree. But there's another stack of gold coins that belongs to the right of that one. A cybersecurity professional may be able to earn another half million dollars more than the average IT worker. A million and a half dollars more in a lifetime than someone with just a high school diploma. And this gap is growing wider. Now that small stack of coins on the left is a grim picture of what technology illiteracy can look like. But this chart is also an illustration of how important coding can be for your future and for your children's future. Did you know that in 1910, fewer than 18% of teenagers went to high school? And in 2010, fewer than 18% of teenagers went to a high school that taught coding. Now, it only took us 30 years to solve that first problem. As farming jobs disappeared in the early 1900s, the U.S. invested heavily in secondary education, and by 1940, three-fourths of teenagers went to high school. We need to do the same thing this century for technology education. By 2025, we need three out of four teenagers going to a high school that teaches coding and cybersecurity. As parents, as citizens, we can't wait 
until 2040. I'm a computer science professor and a cybersecurity expert. I've been teaching coding since 1998. I write books, I record videos, I travel and speak in schools and at conferences around the world. But it's not enough. How many of you in this audience today have taken a computer programming class or have taught yourself some coding? Let's see a few hands. That's good that it's some, but it's not enough. I need your help, all of you. You can learn to code. Henry Ford famously said, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. But if you think you can't code, it's because you just haven't tried yet. If you're in this audience today, or if you're watching online, you can learn to code starting now. Now, some of you may already feel your defenses kicking in. What if I'm not good at it? What if I don't like it? What if I just don't want to be a coder for the next 20 years? My answer might surprise you. You see, coding is not the goal. Coding is the gateway. In the same way we learn English, not just to become authors or journalists, but to communicate with others. And in the same way that math doesn't just prepare us to become an accountant or an engineer, but it helps us solve problems, manage our finances, and think logically. People who learn to code can become entrepreneurs, innovators, who connect people in new ways using new platforms. You could be like two of my students who've gone on to work at both Riot Games and Blizzard Entertainment, building games like League of Legends and World of Warcraft. And you can go into a job like IT, cybersecurity, or artificial intelligence, robotics, with extra skills, extra literacy that can buffer you from some of the rapid changes that are coming. My mom, and I am so grateful to have my mom in the audience with us today. Thanks, mom. I love you. My mom bought me my first computer in 1984, a Commodore 64. And I believe we have a picture. <laughs> Look how happy I am. And 35 years later, just thinking about that computer still makes me smile. You see, I learned to code when I was a teenager. But I have a lot of college students who take their very first computer programming class as young adults. They didn't know that instead of just playing Minecraft all of these years, they could have been coding in it. So let me give you three reasons to start coding now. Number one, do it for yourself. And it's not just about the money, although you can earn a lot. If you learn about cybersecurity, you can protect yourself from cyber criminals and online predators. If you learn web and mobile app programming, you can create your own new business model like Uber or Airbnb. You can start by finding a technology that you enjoy. Go to a library and print something on a 3D printer or buy a programmable drone like this one for under a hundred dollars. Some people like to start with a block-based programming language. This is the Tickle app. It's a mobile application that lets you program drones and robots right on your mobile device. You can see the commands look like Lego bricks. You choose the blocks that you want to run and they snap together just like Lego bricks in the order that you decide. When you're the coder, you get to choose how things work. So let's see how this code works on this actual drone. 
When I press play, it should take off, and then it's going to repeat these steps four times. It's going to move forward for about a second, turn right 90 degrees, move forward again, turn right 90 degrees, move forward for about a second. So what's it doing? We're drawing a square in the air. <laughs> Pretty close, right? <laughs> so start with the technologies that you find fun and fascinating. And even before you understand what every line of code does, run it, change it, move things around. Start coding for you. Number two, do it for others. Bring more value to your future employer. Provide for your family. Or impact your community. When you learn to protect yourself online, you can better protect your kids and your other family members from online threats. You can even write an app that helps people in your own hometown. One of my students this semester is building an app for the city of Dahlonega. It's a mobile app that lets you report problems like potholes in the road or street lights that are out. And in addition to capturing the exact GPS location of the issue, it tracks how many people have reported a problem. And those problems that get reported by more people get higher priority in being repaired. You can build a future for yourself a future for your family, and you can help people right in your own hometown. You can make your neighborhood a better, safer place. That's the kind of lasting impact you can make when you learn to solve problems with technology. Finally, number three, do it to make the world a better place. Here's a good example. Charity Water is a global clean water initiative that revolutionized transparency in both the dire need for clean water in poorer communities and in the ability to see where your donation goes, down to the precise GPS coordinates of the drinking well you can sponsor. A web application, code, is bringing much needed attention and relief to people who need it the most. In my house, my wife is able to track the remaining 3,800 tigers left in the wild through a similar app from an animal rescue organization. The thought of big cats going extinct before our children grow up is heartbreaking to her. If there's something that breaks your heart, or if there's something that makes you really mad, coding can help you harness the power of technology to reach thousands or even millions of people who care about the same cause. You can create a positive chain reaction to help make people aware and get them involved. If you're passionate about protecting your country, did you know that all five branches of the US military now recognize cyber as a domain equal to land, sea, air, and space? Today, billions of people go online every day, sharing ideas and resources, creating new businesses, new charities, new games and apps, new ways of seeing the world. Four billion of the world's seven and a half billion people are connected to the internet. Spies and soldiers, terrorists and activists, Hackers, doctors, musicians, and bloggers are all logging on every day. And it's made possible because of code. People say the world is changing. The world has already changed. Step out of your comfort zone and become literate in the language of technology. Learn to code. What you do with it from there is limitless. Thank you.